Hello and welcome to the Metal Cell Podcast. Uh, this is Richie here and I'm delighted to welcome filmmaker Rob O'Halloran. How are you, Rob? Uh, all good, man. Thank you for having me. Pleasure to be here. Yeah, it's cool that um, you managed to find your way down here. I left the red bin as usual. If any guests <laughs> as, have... as a marker at the end of the road there, yeah. yeah. Help you. And um, it's a beautiful day outside as well. So it's a bank holiday Monday and fair play to Rob giving me some of his time. So um, for those that don't know Rob, um, he has been working away busily doing videos for the last, how many years now Rob? It's quite a while it's now. It's like 10 years professional I suppose, like yeah. 10 years since I was in college anyway and kind of was working straight after college, so 10 years. Like 10, 10 years, so he's qu- quite um, a good background behind him. So I'm going to kind of talk through some of the stuff he's done as well. Um, you might have come across him being metal fans with his work with Worn Out and 3 or 4 Baylor. Uh, videos as well um it's not a bad place to start actually um and we'll work kind of backwards or forwards if whatever suits you up so how did you come across Baylor maybe first first of all uh, well Baylor actually approached me they were um I had done a few videos with uh, a buddy of mine Ian O'Callan Mini uh, as he's kind of known around the scene who would have been in a few different bands but I did a couple of videos for them one for a band who's in called Terriers um, what the hell if you remember them yeah, yeah. no this is just bizarre now because um, I was at Monolith and uh, it's weird the way circumstances work out I was at Monolith Sarda and a, a guy called Tom Gettings shout out to Tom Gettings um, he was on about a band called the Terriers and never heard of them before and uh, he just kind of went on you have to have heard of the Terriers and I was there and nah, never heard of them and he kind of described them what they were like and stuff and the fact that you've brought it up now as well it's just bizarre go on so tell us about them but, first uh, yeah so I just did a very quick video with them they were doing um, a kind of a live recording with Eamon Coleman if you know Eamon Coleman at all yeah. uh, in the practice studios in Dublin Hill where uh, the other Richie works, works okay. out of but, yeah. um, so I did a, a quick video for them um, and that led on to another video with, with uh, another one of Ian's bands Ian O'Callan's band called Horse right. um, which is a lot darker like the, the Terriers one was a bit brighter and just kind right. of a little rough around the edges kind of old old film quality look to it but um, the horse video then was a bit more kind of HD very dark uh, video and the lads in Baylor had seen that and then Chris approached me to do something for them and asked me if I could uh, do something kind of similar to what I did for for horse but right. what it, again it's something similar but completely different okay <laughs> so yeah. yeah yeah for. yeah yeah so um, so yeah, that's how that's how I got which, it with Baylor. Which song was that? Uh, which Baylor song or which yeah, horse song? Which Baylor? For it was the binding. Oh Baylor yeah, was the binding. That was kind of in an old house and warehouse. Do you know? What, do you know where, where was it was that? actually? Although I I don't know should I be saying this or not? But, um, <laughs> Did you break in there illegally? <laughs> no. Oh well, go on, go but, for uh, it. Then. Richie from Dublin Hill, the Cork Rehearsal Studios, yeah. kind of did us a favour. And um, he there's a big warehouse space out the back of his jamming rooms, okay. and he he got us out there for the horse video. Right, um, he was kind of like keeping on the on the down low as well. He's like, don't don't be telling anyone this, and here I am telling everybody it. But um, so yeah, we got it for that. And then when Baylor were looking, like locations are always the hardest thing to find. Like yeah. like big warehouse space is fantastic. Yeah, but they're just so hard to find. Mm-hmm. But um, but luckily enough, Richie let us out there as well for for the Baylor video, and we just like a run of the place for something like. 16 hours right um so yeah that's that's where we shot and, and what was shot. what was can you remember your typical setup for that video um it was kind of minimal lighting i knew i was going to be doing a lot in post with it you know okay um and i took a bit of inspiration from i worked with a company called bull puppy in dublin and they did the video for uh, overhead the albatross uh, big river man Right. I don't know if you've seen no. it, but it's kind of minimal lighting, spot lighting with a bit of camera whip, you call it, okay. involved in it. And I wanted to take that idea and use it in a darker, heavier context. Okay. So it was kind of minimal lighting. Um, each lad had their own single light, single spotlight. The drummer had three lights, sorry, because it's just a bigger kit to be to be lighting. Yeah. And so I was also layering in animation with that. Yeah, video. it's really cool. Yeah, Thanks, I saw man. that, the yeah, scribbling. Fucking jeez, it took me a long time. <laughs> and like, when I came up with the idea first, I actually approached Horse with the idea for the clips of animation. They weren't mad in it. Yeah. So I was like, oh, that's cool. And then I, I was showing Baylor some of the sample footage I'd taken. They were like, fuck, man, that looks yeah, yeah. class. We want yeah. loads of that. Yeah. I was like, absolutely, yeah, I'll yeah. do loads of that. Little did I realize, like, my hand would be fucking killing me, like, hours and hours of drawing. Over kind of stills, is it? Or well, I, 
how they do it. Probably the lo-fi fucking answer to it was like literally I'd be bringing up the footage that we shot right. and sticking an A4 piece of paper onto okay. the screen and tracing around bits um, and then taking Just the that form of the body, yeah. Form of the yeah. body or or writing lyrics and some oh, yeah, part little, of it, yeah. you know. Um, so it was literally taking those hand drawings. You'd do two or three cells. You'd have to take them down, take a photograph of the drawing, yeah. then bring the photo into Adobe Premiere Pro, reverse right. the colors on it, and layer it in to a certain transparency for each and every Jesus. fucking photo. And it was like hundreds and hundreds of photos. Of course, yeah, because, I mean, <laughs> so, you're, you're animating it as as the band member is moving. I that's it, man. Yeah, you're trying to capture that movement. So it was a hell of a lot of work. I was kind of sorry that I suggested it. <laughs> but at the same time, I think the, the finished product is, it's is brilliant. I'm really proud and of it. And to know what, again, it's another feather to your Oh, like really thanks man um, yeah that was really cool video so like how long like did you allow yourself to the lads say to the lads that like this is going to take maybe a month to do it or two months did you put your time frame on it or did you or, did, or were they happy to leave you I, I, t- I, t- I work really quick like for for any project that I'm on I just get so obsessed with it yeah. that I have to like I'll be up like you know fucking 24 hours straight at times just because I'll just do one more move or I'll just do this next bit or I'll just do this next part and you realise that you've just spent like you know so long at yeah. it so I think I actually think I had that ready in two weeks man jeez um, which, was... which is usually quick I'm, like it's usually about a week with, with any video it, it doesn't matter I seem to get them all done in about a week yeah sure, that's if, great if like too for, intense, a, you know? for a band to hear that you know what I mean because I'd imagine like kind of when they re- record a song they want to get it out as fast as they can you absolutely know? Yeah, yeah Um. so then after that then did you go was the next one then in for a penny or was it anti venom? Can you remember? It was anti venom was next, yeah, right. which is kind of a live video. Um, I, I, I thought it got good results out of that one as well. Actually, yeah. it was a lot, a lot less intense for editing. Um, just throwing black and white on it as well to match all the colors because we were using a few different cameras for that. Um, and yeah, it came together well. Like, like I was looking at a, an old Red Enemy live video that they had done, um, yeah. which used kind of similar look, like that black and white look, and yeah. just they, they were really frantic inside the crowd in the mosh pit with yeah. the camera. And I, I think that Red Enemy video is one of the best live videos I've ever seen that really captured the energy of the band, yeah. it really captured the energy of the, of, of the, the audience there as well. And I wanted to do, to try and accomplish something similar with, with Anti Venom, and I think we're nearly there, man. Yeah. I think it came out well, you know. Yeah. Um, what camera did you use for that? I was using an ENG camera uh, with a motorized zoom lens t- just to. Uh, it, it'll kind of emulate a lot better than a single lens camera. It'll, it'll capture a lot more. So it was a Canon XHA1S was what I was using. Mm. ENG would be like electronic news gathering. Okay. That's what they call a camera. Um, so, yeah, it had the zoom lens. But I also had a guy with a DSLR with a fixed lens. Uh, so okay. he was moving around a bit. So you had and, that as well. Yeah, yeah, and we had a GoPro right at the top of the stage looking directly yes. down at the lads as well. So three yeah. cameras, I think, yeah. yeah. Um, again, these cameras, like, you know, I only... I've seen maybe some footage from Knox Straffen, I think, and one or two other ones, that those cameras are surprisingly small. You know, kind of gone, I think, are the days now when you're kind of looking at guys going into doing video shoots and they're like literally on their shoulder or something like that. These are like real handheld not it, it all depends on your budget man like i'd yeah. love to be shooting with um the ari alexa which is a bigger camera again, okay you know? but it, it depends on what you like i mean what dslr is now the, the smaller like photography looking cameras yeah what they can do now is fucking phenomenal like you know yeah like i mean what i use primarily now is a gh4 um panasonic gh4 which shoots up to 4k cinema quality stuff like fantastic yeah. And uh, it does a 96 frames a second slow motion as well. Okay. So it's really, it's a really versatile camera. It's and really what, what kind of budget uh, did I they come I in that, I think I bought that for 1400 and it came with a lens and, um, and a memory card. So um, yeah, that was quite good. But then again, you can like, if you want to, like, if you want to get into your lenses, you could be spending another thousand euro per yeah. lens. It just all yeah. depends on your budget. And how do you kind of keep up then with kind of latest tools and trends? Like, is there certain magazines or certain kind of YouTube channels you subscribe Friends, to? Friends, really, man. To be really, honest, yeah. yeah. If if I see someone's work and I'm like, holy shit, how did he do that? You know, I'd be just uh, like curious as to what they're using. Is okay. it Premiere Pro? Is it Final Cut? What kind of cameras they're mm. using? But um, it, there's a, there's a lot of Alexas or Ari Alexas around now, like for for. But they're such an expensive camera. I don't know because, like, for me, I find that bands don't have a whole pile of money to be spending on music videos. So there's no way I'm going to be hiring out an Ari Alexa for yeah. the day, you know. Yeah. Or or the Red cameras, like which we've 
would have used on the bigger budget stuff. Yeah. I, I don't know where people are getting money for it. Like, well, the 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 time we shot on a Red Dragon now was for um, walking on cars. Right. Uh, I was just the um, the first assistant camera and focus puller for that, really. Right. But um, but that had a big, but that had like thirty grand of a budget. Really. Wow. So I mean, they put it into the cameras, they put it into the crew. Um, you know, we had a catering vehicle following us around, which I'd say cost a pretty penny as well. Yeah. You know. So, so, man, it's it's like, you know, it depends where you want to put your money. But, like. but um, that camera you're on about there, the red, what's it called? Red Red Dragon is red what Dragon, we use now yeah. for walking on cars. Yeah. Um, how would you get up, up to speed with that if you're kind of renting it out or whatever? You have to be a nerd, man. Okay. <laughs> you, just, you have to be, like, it was Kev Minogue who was the DOP for that, director of photography for that. Mm-hmm. So he chose the cameras, the lenses and the lighting and that kind of stuff. But um, he he's just one of these lads who go home with a manual. Okay. And like just sit there for hours tweaking and figuring it out. Yeah. Even, he was so precious. I was the assistant camera. What my job should have been was assembling the camera and all the bits. And but he was so precise in it. He'd be like sweating watching me do it. And he's, <laughs> I'll, I'll just do that there. And so it, it kind of, in a way, made my job very easy because I had a lot less to do. Yeah. But um. But yeah. But he got amazing results in that as well. I don't know if you've seen uh, the, the what what fuck what's it Catch Me If You Can video is it? No. I'll, I'll send yeah, you a link to yeah, it in yeah, one yeah. of the walking on cars videos. Yeah. But um so kind of then which my favourite video by them um is in for a penny and for a pound. Oh by Baylor, yeah. Isn't you? yeah That's yeah. a great <laughs> video, man. Um the whole concept behind it had you much input in, I, in relation man, to that? It was the, just, lads were, the lads came up with it, yeah. We're were just mad into getting for some reason they were just mad into getting gorilla suits. <laughs> And That's farting around Cork, just like, uh, and skating. And, and like, they're, they're mad into their skateboarding as well. Yeah. And I used to be a skateboarder back in the day as well. So I, okay. I thought it was a fantastic yeah. idea. But um, it was very run and gun stuff. I, I, I'd usually have like each shot mapped out and how long it'll take me. And, you know, if yeah. I need another angle, I'd, I'd know everything kind of pre- reasonably precisely. So that for the edit, then I'd know exactly yeah. what I was doing. But um, in for a penny, it was a lot rougher and readier, just running yeah. all over Cork City. Was it scripted? Just, like, uh, to a certain degree, like, yeah, okay. yeah. We had kind of, sh- we had shot listed anyway, as opposed to scripted. Okay. We had certain shots that we wanted to hit. And, yeah. Uh, we were just trying to take them off as we were going, you okay. know. But then certain locations didn't work out. We had to kind of compromise and use other locations. Right. And there was times we were literally just driving around Cork going, fuck it, it'd be cool to get a shot here or a shot yeah. there or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, and did you do a dummy run on it or did you just go straight no, into straight it? Straight into it, man. Yeah. Cool. Which was, which was like, we had to really because, like, we're farting around in grill costumes with no, do you know, we've no permission to do this around Cork City or anything. Like, we've no permits to do any of this shit. So we had yeah. to, um, we had to kind of run and gun it. Like, and as soon as we took one or two takes, we were running to the next location in case yeah. anybody gammed on or the guards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The guards well, are I mean, down to us, you know. I think that was, yeah. Was that before the Young Offenders? Might have been kind of roughly. It would have been before the Young Offender yeah. series. Yeah. So like nobody would have batted, batted an eyelid if it was now these days. You know yeah, what I mean? They probably, they'd probably assume go it's the Young Offenders. It's the young yeah. Offenders. It, yeah. uh, did you actually do any work for that? I did. I did um, two days on it um, for the Young Offenders as a camera in the camera department. But to be honest, with you, like I'm, I'm actually not too much of a camera nerd. Right. And they're shooting on Ari Alexa, and I, I, I'm not the kind of guy to go home with a manual, so I didn't know the camera that well. Right. So they, they didn't call me back after two right. days, and okay. I'm not surprised, you know. Okay. I was only, I was only filling in for a lad as well, so he, yeah. was, he was back the, the next, the next day. So yeah, um, is that a big production? Do you think? Oh yeah, it's yeah, it's fairly big. But I mean, they they even though it's a big production, they shoot like a almost like a low budget production. Yeah, that's really. that's the kind of effect I get. They kind I get of roll off with it. things yeah. and they run and gun a bit, you know. Yeah, um, like what kind of crew would be involved in that now? From kind of your side of thing, would they have like there was, um, crew on ten or would it be? There was only I think there was four on the camera crew right. between your focus puller, your assistant, your second assistant. DOP, the operator. Right. Um. So I think there was four on the camera team, but uh, it, then you'd like three or four on the sound team. Yeah. You'd your director, your assistant director. So I think I think there was about you know between ten and twelve people, okay. uh, uh, crew wise. Yeah. On, f- for the whole thing, you know. Yeah, something like that would be a good job to get as well, though. If you were into it, you know what I mean. You, you at least you know you've continuity for. How many episodes a, a season? Man. So, oh, sure, these jobs like they're grand safe bet. Like, I mean, yeah. freelancing is tough, man. Yeah, but, uh, but yeah, Paddy and the lads on the camera crew there got got a great deal with that. Like, I mean, they're almost guaranteed a second season as yeah. well, really. So, yeah, um, which needs leads us nicely on to um, two two of my favorite ones as well that you did. 
um, talk to me about Hurricanes. Oh yeah, well, I can't. I can never pronounce the band's name. It's either Ayla or Ayladda. I'm sure. I, it's, I, I was going to kind of go Ayladda as well, but I it's think it's, wrong. I think I it's Ayladda. Uh, they, they actually, I, I, I had to double check with them a few times before we were introducing it for the Indie Cork Film Festival. As well. Okay. I was like, What's the band name again? And I'm, they tried to drill it into me, but I'm I'm going to go with Ayladda. I'm going to say yeah. it's Ayladda. Yeah. But um. But yeah, the lads. That's a beautiful me. shoot, man. Thank, Thank you so much. It's yeah, yeah, class, man. Thank you so much. I think, uh, to be honest, it's one of my favorite videos as well. Yeah. I think between that and the binding, because they are both very different videos. But um, I remember getting it was the first it was the first shoot I did with the GH4 using 4K, and uh, I remember getting the footage back at home and just sitting there and looking to the raw footage, going, "Holy shit, <laughs> this looks class, man!" Yeah. You know, the lighting right, the yeah. location right, and everything just looked real crisp and real fresh. Yeah. And I was using this technique as well a lot um, called lens whacking. Right, explain that. So it's it's where you physically take the lens off the camera to it. Just slightly, and you let the light leak into it just a bit, okay. so you're getting focus on. You can see what what you got focus on, but it looks slightly warped. Okay, and you're letting the light come in, and I'm what, using what scenes were they now? All through it, really, the like whole every, every transition you see with like a bit of a light flash or yes. something like that is, is actual physical is lens whacking. It's okay. not, it's not an effect that I've done afterwards. Yeah. It's something physically done with the camera at the time. Yeah, I think beautiful. Effect, all that yeah. looked great as well. You know, it yeah. really came together, man. And using using some of the 96 frames a second slow motion in there as well and in particular uh, the drummer you did that beautiful thanks even man, with yeah. the you know the symbols there the way they were just, just fucking lovely stuff um i think looking at your work in relation to a few of those things you really kind of love to linger and dwell on old buildings yeah i love it man yeah. and just drifting up even when she's coming up the stairs there and you know you're focusing in on the doorknob and stuff very fucking tidy you know um what kind of inspirations um would you have in relation to to kind of i suppose professionally wise looking at is there certain directors certain um guys that you kind of admire that kind of influence your work do you know there's not really man again it's friends I like i like that's where i learn most and where i get 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 excited by things is it's just seeing other friends work like you know yeah. so like bold puppy again a company a company based in dublin did they, they were based in Kerry at start and then they moved out to dublin but a lot of their work inspires me and it's just really crisp what they do with very little money is is astonishing i love okay. i love people who have no money and i yeah. love to see the creativity that yes. comes out of that yeah. so that's where i take most of my inspiration like you know like watching watching bigger budget videos on Kerrang or, or Scuzz or whatever is around these days. I don't think Scuzz, I suppose, is yeah. still going. But like, I don't know, the bigger budget stuff never really appealed to me. I love low budget. Yeah, shit, yeah, like yeah. The yeah. raw quality and the low yeah. budget thing. And I suppose, look, call a spade a spade working in Ireland, you will be more than likely dealing with low budget unless something particularly, like, as you said, uh, walking on cars would yeah. be a good example. It's probably, um, but again, I love your work then with Worn Out, The False Hope video cheers man yeah <laughs> they put a bit more money into that actually they, it looks like, like they, really they have kind of like themselves and, and Baylor to a certain degree but worn out are kind of coming out of the gates with their heads screwed on really yeah. tight man they know they know they want a certain production value in whether it's the, their music or, or their videos they want a certain production value to it mm. so they they in fairness put a bit more money into that and I actually could hire out um, a, a director of photography for that Kieran Fitzgerald is his name right. um, and he just has better equipment than I'd have you know he's, okay. he's a Sony FS 700 with cine lenses on it a big fucking thing yeah. um, which is which is awkward when we're dragging it through Mullenhasic waterfall woods like was oh, that where it was the yeah, a lot of it yeah. a lot of lovely, it lovely yeah um, so we're fucking carrying this big camera through that but um, but yeah, it was uh, yeah, came another video that came together quite well. I thought, you know, and the it's just upping my level of production value as well when you've got those that camera and those lenses, you know. Again, um, what about the script to that? Um, did the band come up, or was it a kind of mixture of both? So yeah, so the band came up with the main concept, which they wanted a kind of a chase video yes. with two lads chasing a box, mm. um, a bit pulp fictiony, is it pulp yeah, fiction, pulp fiction, yeah, box, yeah, correct, yeah. Um, 
but uh, th- so that was their basic concept and then I came up with the characters of the these two mechanics working in a breaker's yard mm. and that gave it the aesthetic as well again this grimy old garage yeah. I love rotting <laughs> down fucking places yeah, man, yeah, you know? yeah. There's, a, there's a nice um, pattern coming through there yeah yeah but um, so yeah I knew of this uh, old breaker's yard called Big Sean's um, <laughs> if, if you know it at all we used to, it used to be so gnarly in there man they used to have like fucking cars stacked up about 20 high in these columns it was fucking epic and I was hoping that'd be the case when I went back there I knew he'd been closed down though he was actually closed down by right. the EPA for all the fucking oil and stuff that was spilling out of the cars Jesus. so when I was going up there I was hoping it would still be as old and gnarled and fucked up yeah. as it was but he had a lot of hate to clear a lot of that okay. like. but he still had the main garage yeah. he still had a few rusty old cars around so we yeah. used all that to our advantage yeah. like you know and how long did that shoot what was the turnaround in that um two days shooting and again about a week editing man i got that done so quick yeah. I was, again i was fucking obsessed by the footage i was getting as well yeah. i was like fuck this looks mint <laughs> just couldn't just one more move just one more of this some more caught one more transition and sure again fucking yeah. into the wee hours of the night you're like oh shit i've just spent 13 straight hours doing this you know <laughs> um so kind of again which is um interesting you're not um picky in relation to your projects and um, with bands and stuff not really no no i'd kind of do anything like, yeah. You know, um, yeah anything that appeals to me anyway like, yeah if you were a heavy metal band and this is what the show is obviously about um you have a nice body of work there to show off to prospective bands coming through you know hopefully man yeah because yeah, yeah, it, it, it like i mean it's the gritty the abrasive snuff that i kind of take away from those videos as well you know so you started then mint did you with a, a mint body video, yeah. was that to, to be honest it was kind of it was just was mainly myself I, I had a little team of people that if we had a bigger budget so ian ruby was on the team and a guy called noel mcelliot was on the team mm. um so if if we had bigger budget stuff i could kind of call on them but just for the website it looked good to have a team yeah. as well but to be honest it was just me it, it was mm. just me really doing things and um and i was kind of a one-man crew for most of my videos um and still am like you know yeah but um but yeah, that's how that worked. And well, I don't know if you'd be familiar with Ian Ruby's work at all. Which he's um, he would have done videos for Hope as Noise. Oh, um, I've heard of them. Yeah, and uh, and he did, he did Baylor's Call of the Unknown as well. Okay. Video. he did yeah. that. All right. But um, yeah, I work. I, I love Ian. Like he's yeah. he'd, he'd be one of my better buddies. Like, but um, yeah, we did a feature film as well with Ian. Like my second feature film I ever did was with Ian. Right. So Dead Dogs, it's called. It was fucking. It was cool to get involved in that as well. And what was the t- what was the story behind that one? It's kind of a drama right. about um just this guy coming back from a mental hospital. You don't know exactly what he's been through. Yeah. But it's just a little peek into his. He's trying to get his life back on tracks after coming out of this mental hospital, mm. and um, get his relationships back in order. But like what he sees is his, what he needs to do, not isn't necessarily working out with the people in his life. Like his mm. his partner isn't really that into being back with him, and his friends yeah. are a little all over the place. Um, and it's just his, basically about his struggle. Was it a short? A feature film. Oh, was it an actual feature? Ninety film? minutes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, did you have to get help with that? It was uh, we had a small enough crew in it, like so. It was Ian Ian Ruby really leading the charge, uh, yeah. and I was co-producing. So I was okay. just trying to find locations and yeah. and equipment and lighting and that kind of stuff. I was kind of the technical producer and the director of photography for the whole thing. And we had two lads on sound as well. And that was about that was the whole crew man for a feature yeah. film like and we'd fucking no money like it yeah. was a couple of hundred euro we had. Um, how do you find um, getting funding for these things? Can you tr- uh, approach um, the Irish Film Board or? I'll tell you the funding in Ireland is a weird one. So there's there's rounds of funding that come around every few months where okay. you can you can apply for either right. feature film funding or short Shorts, film scripts yeah. or, or things like that, and it's it's supported by the. BAI, who were actually after changing, it used to be the Broadcast Authority of Ireland, but I'm sure mm. they're after changing their name now. Yeah. But um, so there are specific grounds where you look for very specific things, you know. Um, and as I say now, between features, shorts, documentaries, or whatever. So if you don't fit into their exact bracket on that particular month or that year, right. you just won't get the funding. Okay. But we did approach. Uh, I think it was. I think it was the Broadcasting Authority of Ireland. We approached right for Dead Dogs. But um, but they they're very strange, man. They 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 were saying things like, "I can't, 
I can't imagine an audience really falling in love with this main character that you've gotten. Like, at the time, me and Ruby was like, you're not supposed to fucking fall in love with him. You're supposed to hate him at times. Yeah. You're supposed to think he's a fucking mm. asshole and a scumbag and all that, you know. But, um, so, it was t- very difficult to fit into their their particular niches. Um, and even afterwards as well, like, so, we, as I say, we, we just produced this. It was all Ian's money that he put into it, you know. Yeah. And it was just our time. Okay. Um, we had two lads on sound as well. Ian O'Callaghan, again, was on sound from, yeah. from Horse. He was giving us a dig out. <laughs> and Kev O'Leary, we had on sound. But um, they were doing it just, just to be involved, you know, and yeah. to, to get a project done. But uh, what I found so disappointing was afterwards we ended up getting it into quite a few festivals and it was doing really well, man. Yeah. We, we were winning awards and stuff. Um, we opened the Indie Cork Film Festival. It was right. the opening film for that. But we got into a festival in Texas and we were like, oh, geez, you know, this is fantastic. Uh, in the Fort Worth Independent uh, Film Festival. Right. There. And we are hoping to at least go over there. Um, maybe Fall to Ireland would give us a bit of cash to yeah. go over there and at least represent yeah, Irish exactly, film. Yeah. Um, and it was, it was around a few different places. Like, and we were hoping to at least get a bit of money to, for a plane ticket yeah. and some digs for, for a weekend, you know. But they weren't, because <laughs> nobody was, was doing it. And That's bizarre. Fall to Ireland had this really limited list of, like, you basically have to be in Cannes you know, or, or fucking something, yeah. Sundance or something before it's they It's disappointing to hear that, isn't it? It's because awful, I mean, man. It's awful, man. Like, yeah. Cork has a good reputation of producing indie movies, Disco Dogs and a few others, mm. you know, and shorts as well, like, you know. You know, I thought, like, at least they'd be some way supportive. You'd be hoping, man, yeah. I think even for lads in Dublin, it's kind of, it's difficult enough. Like, I'd, yeah, I don't You know. kind of always think they'd always get the better bite of the cherry anyway in Dublin but yeah, maybe not well, they, you know? they, they do as well yeah. it, they're all under the same thing it's Broadcasting Authority of Ireland or you know, yeah. these kind of places that are, that are again they're very niche in, in what yeah. they want you know I saw the short you did actually I watched it um, the other night it was <laughs> very entertaining I think it was uh, your dad actually um, talking about the the rabbit killer <laughs> <laughs> Jero Halloran's true stories. Yes, yeah, yeah, man. Although the, the version for YouTube, I had, I actually got that in a few festivals, and I had to subtitle it. And I think for some reason with the subtitles, it doesn't work as well. Yeah, um, with sub, I always find that anyway. I have to, like even with Netflix, sometimes you know the daughter would have the f- subtitles on for some reason. I f- I find them they're very distracting. Yeah, yeah, they take you away from they the do. picture on screen. Exactly, like yeah. you're constantly looking down on them, which is a, which is a shame. And uh, that you opened, um, was it another Cork Independence Festival with that? Or was it or, or what was um, the story with that? So it got into, it got into, I, I think it was, I don't think the Cork Film Festival had split to the two festivals, which was, there was the main Cork Film Festival and then Indie Cork came right. out of that. So I think, um, I think Joe Holland was, was before that, before they they had that split. Mm. Um, so I think it was in the main Cork Film Festival, but it got picked up then to play in the Chicago Irish Film Festival. Yeah. And then um, Murphy's were doing these promotions called Murphy's Big Nights Out. Right. And they were doing movies, uh, short, short films that, and they asked to be part of that as well. Um, and it was played twice at two, two different events one was just a big night out um, which was fuck I can't even remember where that was now back at the Enterprise oh, okay. uh, lounge whatever yeah, yeah. Place Flying Enterprise Flying Enterprise lounge yeah. back at that they had made a little cinema set up for that yeah. it was class but, um, but then they also wanted it to play um, with in the Opera House yeah. uh, like which is the biggest screen wow. in Ireland at the yeah, time yeah 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 you know? Um, and I was like, "Fuck it, that'd be deadly!" Like, but it, it was such a weird mix up because they had, they had live music um, as well. I think the undertones were actually playing at it, and right. I was featured as more prominent than the undertones. That's the fucking class, film man. was more <laughs> prominent than them. It was Jesus. crazy, but like it was it was kind of the wrong place for it in a way because people were expecting live music and that was it. And for everybody to shut the fuck up and watch a film was an impossible task. So yeah. you, you just hear the fucking, the everybody's just chatting away. Yeah. Like, and you, you your film's on the big screen. So it's it was a little frustrating. Yeah. But at the same time, it was a great night. Yeah, so you got a nice, you got a nice bit of traction with that then. I did, yeah, yeah funnily enough. Yeah, um, so, and then that, because like kind of you were coming on, I found out then that you kind of worked, that wasn't the first time you worked with your dad. Like kind of as a young guy go, growing up, um, when did you actually get your first camera? Can you kind of remember? Um, I'll Where, tell you, my, the first camera I ever laid my hands on was actually a friend's parents' camera. Um, okay. So my buddy, Michael O'Gorman, his parents had a video camera. Um, just one night, we just dug it out. We're like, oh, fuck. Was it one of those camcorder things with the side yokes you pull exactly, out? Is it? Yeah, was it? Yeah, yeah, really old thing. Hi-8, uh, I think it was called. Um, Hi-8 tapes, like so bigger than your mini DV tapes. It was yeah. really old fucking, yeah. really old thing. 
But um, so we just dug that out and started fucking playing around with it, man. And at the time, I was skateboarding a lot, so I started filming skateboarding and did basically these jackass stunts, oh. <laughs> um, which we, we call ourselves gobshite. Fucking embarrassing now to think of it, like, but, uh, but that's Ever. how I got my start, man. Yeah. And um, then we started kind of feeding into more comedy sketches where you're like you're doing cuts and angles and right. like it was more like filmmaking then than just jackass yeah. stuff and i learned how to edit between because you couldn't plug the camera into a computer at the time it was a high-eight camera right. so i had to go directly into a vcr that's and, right correct and edit that way that's how yeah. i edited was like literally between a camera and a vcr um so so yeah that was that was my first time we used the camera really and what, you were you were in early teens then yeah i would have been i'd say 17, I think. All right, 17, all right. 18. So you were a bit older. I was then, a bit yeah. older, man, yeah. yeah. But at, at, at that time, I didn't know anything about filmmaking mm. as a potential career or anything like and that. And of course, there's none of that in fucking schools or anything no, like no, that No, no, which, which is a shame. It man. is a shame, Fuck, yeah. like, I'd love to... It should fall under the fucking guise of art, Yeah, you know? abs- oh, man, absolutely. Like, I mean, you see these AV clubs and stuff that they have in America, like most schools have, an have a- they, a- yeah. AV clubs, yeah. It's just I mean, like kind of um, secondary schools. Secondary it? school, yeah, high schools, yeah, have AV clubs. But um, where they'd have all the camera and lighting and sound gear that they need in, in the school that they get to, to make use of. But man, if I'd found out about that stuff when I was 13, 14, mm, yeah. like who knows where I'd be now. Like, exactly, you know? yeah. I spent most of my time, my teenage years, drawing, drawing, drawing. Class. There was no fucking arts, art classes. It was only kind of when I did my Leaving Cert in 88, probably the following year, um, they introduced art. But up to that time, there wa- it wasn't there. The only the closest thing you could go to it was technical drawing right you know? Jesus, <laughs> it's a fucking world away <laughs> it's a world away yeah <laughs> but i had to satisfy myself with that you know but um yeah so so we'll say then right you finished school what what was on the horizon then for you so yeah so we, we kind of like some of the best times of my life actually were messing around with those cameras it always like at the start and it kind of stuck with me so then after secondary school um, I I bought my own camera, a mini DV camera that you could actually plug into the computer now. Yeah. Um, which was a fucking massive change for me. Like opening, we started with Windows Movie Maker, which just comes in your on your That's PC right, as standard. That. Like yeah. that fucking blew my mind, man. Yeah. I couldn't believe what I could do with Windows Movie Maker. Mess with the colors, slow motion, fast motion cuts, yeah. like fast cuts, slow cuts. But um, so yeah, I, I absolutely loved that. But then after secondary school, I didn't really know what I wanted to do, and I ended up working in um, in a factory called uh, Tyco Sensomatics, just doing uh, security devices. And I was there for a few years, and um, but I was still I always thought about the camera work and and making little stories and scripts. So I was I was constantly writing little sketches, okay. like like a, in a copy book that I used to bring with me to work, and just always had these ideas. And they actually offered me a permanency in the factory that I was in because I was, I was doing a good job or whatever, yeah. you know. Well, I, just, I wasn't a messer. Like, I just yeah, yeah. Did, my, got down, did my job. Um, but it was when they offered me that, I was like, fuck, I don't want it. I don't this want to be doing this. This is my life this, mapped out ahead of I me. I can't yeah. be doing this for the rest of my life. So I said, yeah. do you know what? I'm going to fucking look up. Can I do this filmmaking thing as, yeah. as a potential, take it more seriously? And at that time, I, I just found out about the Cork Film Festival. I, like, I didn't know where that was. Like, it's been going for fucking yeah, years, 60 yeah. years or something. But I just never came across it. I was like, well, if there's these film festivals and and that kind of stuff, there must be something in this, you know? Yeah. And people do have to work in RT mm. how are they learning you know so that's when I decided to to go into St. John Central College on uh, Salmon Street in the city and just have a look at it and um, a friend of mine at the time Mark Adams as well was fierce interested in this filmmaking thing and, and messing around with cameras and we decided to take a tour to college and again that blew my mind you know because they had um, a proper studio lighting grid and all, like I hadn't I hadn't seen a fucking set of lights in my life that yeah. were professionally done and I was like this just blew me away and like they had a little studio downstairs and a whole editing suites on Apple Mac which I like I thought were fucking <laughs> amazing you know yeah. like this just blew my mind so I, I decided full wholeheartedly that that's what I was going to okay. do for the next two years and and made a few contacts in when we when we got into I was lucky to have two friends with me, Mark Adams at the time and Ian Ruby the guy I yeah. was saying directed Dead Dogs he, he went into college the same year as me and I didn't even know he was doing it it was weird because I knew him before oh, you knew him before that yeah. and then then he, uh, I found out that he was coming to St. John's that's like, class man. perfect man yeah. this is fantastic yeah so so yeah 
so the, um so that got you was it two years and then you two years you man. came out then you could we could have done an optional third year there was an optional third year where you go to Sunderland and you get a degree so what they were what we were working for was fee tax certs in uh, oh yeah in St. John's yeah, yeah, so fee tax five and six but you could go abroad to do a degree after your after, for your third year but I was kind of I don't know whether I was lucky or unlucky but um, while I was in college, I actually I got a few films into the film festivals, and I actually won a few awards. Yeah. I won an award at the Cork Film Festival, which is fucking tough, that's, man. That's, you know, that's a fucking great and one. a great yeah. accolade, you know, yeah. to have that behind me. And I met um, I had actually met them before this company called Frameworks Films, run right. by Eddie Noonan and Emma Bowl. Um, I had met them years previously. They were doing a f- skateboarding documentary, huh. um, and okay. they, in- they interviewed me about it, and and I ended up kind of helping them edit as well. But I met them again. It was after my second year of college. I'd won another uh, an award in the Cork Film Festival, and Eddie, um, who was working with Frameworks, just kind of was like, "Oh man, geez, you're, you seem to be doing well for yourself, yeah. and you were very handy at that skateboarding documentary, yeah. you know." And he's like, "Would you be looking for a job? Because we're actually looking for somebody who can edit on Final Cut." And he's like, "Do you edit on Final Cut?" And I was like, yeah, "Absolutely." That's I just did two years of editing on Final Cut, so um, so I got a job literally directly out of my second year okay. of college, which is so rare, man. I was the only person in the whole the whole school that i was in that actually got a job straight away like yeah. you know so lucky but um so you stuck with them then as it stuck with them got your experience and they were they were a great company to work with as well because it was um like the thing about when i went into college you'd so many different modules you'd sound recording you'd editing you'd lighting you'd camera work you'd directing and the thing for me was like i absolutely fucking loved every single thing okay the same amount i didn't want to specialize yeah and all they were drilling into us was like no you have to specialize on something yeah. because if you don't you're not going to get fucking work like yeah. you know you can't be a jack of all trades and a master mm-hmm. no you have to master yeah. something but i didn't want to do that I, I just loved it all so much so with frameworks the advantage of them was that they were they were such a small company it was basically just me and this guy Eddie yeah. um, working like holding together a documentary production company so we needed to know everything I needed to know how to do sound recording if that was needed I needed to know how to edit myself and on yeah. my own free will and yeah. my own basis um, I needed to know how to operate a camera and take it out independently get it all set up I needed to know how to light you know so it was great cause real hands on experience know, real hands on yeah. stuff and was that based out of Cork or Robert? Cork City yeah, yeah they were in Cork City so I spent the bones two years with them one year on full time contract, so you know, Monday to Monday to Getting Friday. Paid for for, for what you love. Paid man, yeah, absolutely couldn't believe it. Um, so it was, yeah, it was a fantastic experience. And then the, the second year, I wasn't on contract with them, but they kept bringing me in anyway on different yeah. different projects. And I, I also worked with. They had a company that they. Um, kind of chatted with and did a bit of work we called AV3 out in Blarney right. um, who did RTE work nationwide okay. and things like that yeah. so I, I kind of hopped in on a few jobs with them as well in my second year So and they, they had some fantastic equipment and mm. much bigger budgets to be working with so it was yeah between those two years it was a fantastic experience so what, what age were you then kind of Ooh, when you were uh, kind of let loose I suppose like when I was at Frameworks and stuff, I suppose I was about 24. Okay, yeah, so you were still well young, you know Still I mean? relatively young, man, yeah. yeah. Um, so it was a so great, yeah. great experience. You're like, I mean, look, if you went on for your third, third year, you have to balance up with the experience you got hands-on. Because I'd say sometimes companies, they look at the fucking list of what you've achieved in college and then they kind of go for the guy that has the experience rather than risk going for a kind of a graduate you know I yeah sp- yeah I mean like it just depends on what you're looking for. like because uh, as well at the time like just when I kind of finished for Frameworks w- we were lucky enough in Cork that there was a few good filmmakers and Cork short filmmakers like Mark Hogan now which is I can't even think of half of them I know yeah. but um uh, Sean O'Connor and these other filmmakers were were actually getting stuff funded, which was kind of rare. And mm. they would be looking for crew, and they kind of knew me as a as a guy who could do a bit of everything. Yeah. So I was I was I was just handy on set, yeah. you know, I was yeah. just a handy person to have. Even if I was doing sound and they needed somebody to help yeah. out in camera a bit here, I'd be able to do it, you know. Yeah. So I I ended up freelancing for nearly you know eight years after that. Still still do a bit still of it, do, like you know. Yeah. Um, like kind it, of how would you kind of we'll say in a kind of how would you balance cooperation kind of with with others and independent thinking if you were kind of in a invited into a shoot we'll say because I, i'd imagine there is a big creative side 
Oh, absolutely. Which yeah, yourself yeah. anyway. Like, so how do you kind of balance that? Like, I mean, is it kind of still kind of walking on eggshells? No, I mean, Jesus, like, I mean, Are like they? when you're like a lot of a lot of the work I did was just assisting camera or sound recording. It yeah. To be a lot of the work that I got, and like you're just your 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 boss is your boss, and whatever whatever you you don't have any real creative input. You might say, do you know what? I could look better from this angle, or do you know? I, yeah. The lighting there isn't uh, the way I like, and and your DOP, your director of photography, might go, yeah, do you know you have a point, or that angle would be good mm. to get. But um, but mostly you're playing to their tune, man. You know, yeah. and, and the director is the director as well. You know, so y- y- there's not a huge um, space for creative input at that stage. Yeah, like if you're in for pre-production, that's when that's when you should be trying out creative ideas. Uh, okay. But when you're in the run of it, like you're fuck, you, you have to follow things. To, yeah, yeah. To the spec as much as possible. Yeah. You know, you're you've your shot lists and your storyboard, and that's that's what you're doing. You yeah. Know? So, yeah, yeah. No. But, like, I'm sure there's been a few occasions where you're just kind of going, oh, God, I could definitely, you know. <laughs> you don't have to name, but I'm but sure man, there is. I'll tell you what, every time I've thought that, I was wrong. Really? Every fucking time I thought, oh, lads, what are you doing? I can't believe you're spending a half an hour setting up this fucking shot. Yeah. That's going to be on, like, myself and Ian Ruby you now would be, like people who set up really complex shots yeah. uh, for the sake of two seconds would be like why the fuck are they doing that but then when you watch it you're like ah do you know that's okay. why they did it it looks yeah. fucking amazing yeah, and yeah, I was yeah. such an idiot to think otherwise like <laughs> fucking hell this is glass you know there was um, a band there interviewed um, Sarda in Monolith uh, Damon uh, they worked on um, a video for their uh, first single I suppose. well uh, yeah it would be a single yeah because they released it on YouTube um, Rising of the Lights and um, the singer was involved in the production of it as well. Like, um, you should check it out. And a lot of it is kind of based on kind of probably three guys trekking out to this. Uh, it's kind of a, on the River Thames. It's kind of this obscure building set in the future. They're aliens kind of working their way out through it. And then right. they, to kind of do a lot of shots as well in a farmhouse um in, in December and it was kind of minus five and they kind of just talked about like the effort it took so kind of as a cameraman there what would be the, the big problems there would your lens be freezing or um, only if you're going a lot between interiors and exteriors you'd have yeah you'd have that kind of stuff like but um like so when you're bringing from camera from a nice cold outside into the heat it's just you're gonna have fog all over your lens yeah. so you have to you have to leave the camera acclimatized to, okay. to it for and you lose a lot of time doing that i mean yeah. every second fucking counts yeah in uh in in filmmaking like because you're usually going by the daylight if you, and it, in december you've fucking very little daylight, that's it man, yeah you know? yeah so you really have to be going like the clappers so sometimes kind of like my point is sometimes bands have this great idea and then they kind of suddenly realize shit it's actually the wrong month, even. Yeah, you know, absolutely, man. You know, yeah, so kind of... It. And I don't think they realise as well what the amount of manual labours that, that is in filmmaking. I mean, like, a lot of a lot of my freelance work when I've been working as an assistant and not the DOP or whatever, mm. like, you're basically carrying literally tons of equipment, literally tons of equipment, van yeah. loads of fucking equipment, grip yeah. gear and this kind of thing, jibs, and I don't know if you'd be familiar with any grip gear on, on yeah. camera sets but you have things like sliders tracks dollies yeah. um, as I say jibs cranes and this stuff is literally tons of weight that you're carrying up it's always up a fucking mountain somewhere that you're getting the <laughs> shot so you just have lads fucking all day sweating their balls off getting equipment from one place to yeah. another and, and that's the actors the, then and the guys just sitting yeah, around eating you're just sitting around like yeah. I know why, why, why I know that um, is I, I did um, an ad there um, years back when I was in Dublin uh, for American Express and it was in the Paula Duff uh, uh, electric station in the Wicklow Mountains, right? And the whole team of it was a Braveheart kind of right. scenario. And that's exactly what you just described, because it was in the middle of nowhere. There was lads dragging and pulling equipment. So they built a stage down the middle of this kind of, I suppose it was like a bowl-shaped kind of uh, valley, valley. Yeah. So we had to stand on the stage, and we were um, dressed as, I suppose, English knights and to protect the king, you know? And all the lads then had to charge down the hill dressed as Braveheart, you know. Uh, but sure, we had the best fucking time ever because we didn't have to do any manual <laughs> labor. We just showed up on costume and then got fed as well the whole way through it, you know, and got paid for it, you know. That's it, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Although, in fairness, like most, most of the time when we've been on stuff like that, the actors actually do help out. You were just pricks, I'd say. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Couldn't fucking believe our luck to be paid and fed and yeah, just yeah, waltzing yeah. around the place in full gear, for fuck's sake. Oh, man. But, but yeah, yeah, we were very like that note for the walking on cars video, speeding cars is the name of the fucking track. Okay. 
okay. what I mean. But that was up in the Dingle fucking hills in Dingle, like and up in the mountains, Dingle. Again, and it, dragging again, all the gear. All fucking day was just slogging heavy gear up Fuck and down. Yeah. That was it. And then you're trying to fucking, like after doing half an hour's worth of fucking reps on your arms, you're Jesus. having to pull focus. Like, Oh yeah, and your hands will be shaking. your hands yeah. will be shaking. Like you're fucking physically hell. shaking from it. Yeah. Like. So, um, so yeah, it was tough, man. And at the time, not a, I, I didn't make a whole pile of money out of that. I know the lads made a bit of money out of yeah. it, but I fucking didn't. But I was only the assistant again. Yeah, you were kind of grafting, like, like, you know. Yeah, that was it, yeah. That was it. Um, so, have you any side projects around coming up that you can give a shout out yet? I, I actually, when I was coming here, I was like, fuck, I'd love to have something to plug. But unfortunately, I'm on a bit of a break at the moment. I'll tell you I'll tell you the story. Um, basically, Mint, the company that I was working with, we're doing fucking fantastic for the first year. Great mm. opportunities. Yeah. Got to work with Jim Sheridan, of all people. It was Class. fucking amazing. Um, and it was making my money. I was also teching for festivals, film festivals. So I was doing, again, fucking, because I learned so much and so many yeah. different things, I was helping them out with all their audiovisual stuff. Okay. And I was, I was actually tech directing for a few festivals for Skull, oh. Cork, and, and stuff like that. So I was the main guy, and it was it's a good chunk of money. Yeah. Um, so that was keeping me going for my first year. But then for my second year of running Mint, I kind of well, wasn't getting a whole pile of work in, man. And short films in Cork seemed to just disappear with the filmmakers, like, Mark Hogan has gone to gone to Canada. Sean O'Connor, I, I think he was kind of working around Dublin, and and everyone else I said work was gone. So I kind of ran into financial difficulties. Yeah. To be honest with you, and in February I had to officially cease trading right. to go back on the fucking dole. To be honest with you, man. Um, so that's where I'm at at the moment is I can't officially take anything on and I've got no projects coming up but saying that now I don't want any bands to not approach me who are listening to this who yeah. might think fuck this guy would be great for a video do approach me man because I can make something happen but if officially um, it's not till November again there's there's this new thing coming out with social welfare where they're going to start paying artists and, um, and people who work as sole traders times that they're off and not working they're going to give them basically social welfare and then the times that they are working obviously they are working but that's not going to come in until november so it's not till november i can really take it's a fucking joke isn't it how it's the fuck why they why they haven't had that system running for the last fucking 20 years exactly i don't make any sense like, i thought they would you know what i mean it's only when you when yeah. i talk to people like you that that I, you, I can hear your financial struggles. It's like, fucking, fucking it's, crazy it's the shit. Way, it's, it's like Tommy Tiernan says, I don't know if you know the line, but he says, not only do you have to, to, to do, do you get paid to do nothing, but you also have to promise you won't do fucking anything. Yeah. Which is so weird. Like, I mean, please, like, like if I get a project here or a project there, just let me fucking do it. Let me earn a small yeah. bit of money. Yeah. I'll sign on and off if that's yeah. the way I can do it. Like, but yeah. they, they just have nothing in place for that. And it seems to, when you're trying to ask the lads in the, in the social welfare process about this, it's like you're speaking fucking double Dutch to them. They're like, but I don't understand. You yeah, know? they're fucking. Oh, well, and would you, and would would you expect them to understand really? Because of course, it's fucking, just logic, like you, you know? know. Jesus Christ! But like, I mean, we love blowing our own fucking trumpet in Ireland about our great um, fucking films, uh, what great artists we have, what great music. Fucking back it up. Yeah, and fucking Where's the support, man. Yeah. Give them the support, you know, because it's a different story when you talk to someone like you and just fucking hear that now. So you can't actually. Do anything now till fucking November. Not till November. And even at that, I'll have to see when, when that comes along. I'll just have to have, again, probably fucking 20 meetings with the uh, social welfare officers trying to figure out what the fuck I'm trying to say. Yeah. But, um, well, uh, like, obviously, like, the, the balls about it is, like, when I had Mint up and running, what I was hoping to do was... Um, when I was struggling, basically I was hoping to get something in somewhere like manufacturing where I'd be working three days a week and then I can still yeah. do the filmmaking and the social welfare aren't going to be on me at all because yeah, yeah. they've got nothing to do with anything. Yeah. I've got my own limited company and I can yeah. kind of plug away with it. But then, so I was hoping to keep Mint going, but then when I went into serious financial difficulty, I had to go back to social welfare and they made me close down Mint officially. Like I had to deregister everything and I was like, but can't I keep it on because I'm hoping to keep it going at another yeah. point in time. Mm. And they're just like, no, you have to close this down. You have to cease trading as an entity and yeah. that's what that's what kind of caught me. So I'd say it was not going to be the easiest process to bring that back to life. But, yeah. um, well, fucking man, fingers crossed. I, yeah. I, it'll, it'll be there'll be a way to do it, but I just don't know. There's an uncertain future for me at the moment, yeah. man, to be honest with you. Know? Um, and I'm gonna just fucking say it. Like, um, did you ever? I know it's kind of sounds soul destroying, but like, do you ever fucking kind of like there is options there for fucking vi uh, weddings and all that crap as well? Um, did, did you? 
Oh, yeah, I've, I've done my fair share of weddings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what? I actually don't mind them. Yeah. Like, Some, they, sometimes you could actually even get a bit of creativity. It, absolutely, man. Like, mm. I've done... I've only done one wedding video uh, that was entirely me um, where I did everything, you know, yeah. um, from the shooting, the editing. But um, I actually, I was actually proud of it, you know. I was like, yeah. fuck, that's, a, that's one of the best wedding videos I've ever seen, you know, <laughs> like, you know, to I, toot my own uh, horn or whatever, but it was, you know. But like, I mean, I'd imagine there's guys making a fucking steady oh, yeah. fucking living doing that. Oh, like, yeah. I mean, And there is, there actually is creativity. In, like, there was um, the lads, uh, Tom McChoyski in, he's based in Galway now, had a crowd called Cinematic Weddings. And man, you should have seen some of the fucking work that he was coming out with. Like, it was, was fan fucking fantastic. Like, you know, and he got his creative kick out of that, and he was delighted. And, yeah. You know, it's the it's the emotional response from the couple after. He's like, you know, if I don't make him cry, I'm not doing a good fucking yeah. job. And like he did, man. You know, mm. what I mean, well, like I mean, the only reason why I brought that up is because I mean, uh, you know, I did DJing for so many years, and it just. You know, fuck it. Near the end there, it's back breaking work anyway because you're doing it yourself, dragging all yeah, the amps yeah. and so. But like you're in in a pub, um, playing eighties fucking music, and then you're being dictated to. And half and the people don't give a shit. They don't them. care, no. Yeah. And you know, I'm just going, Jesus Christ, this is soul destroying some of the time. And of course, you know, again, you're seeing people drunk and they get uglier as they, yeah, as, yeah, as yeah. the drunker you get, they you get. You definitely and, get that with and, and, well, and you get know. fucking just getting taught that shit yeah you know yeah. they you're you're just taught being taught and down to you play it i pay you play yeah fucking uh even the team tuned to the fucking dallas i was requested to play one night <laughs> the sad thing was i had it <laughs> <laughs> but like that's why i kind of just abandoned it and then i kind of went into podcasting then you know and um it's, it's a great adventure i'm fucking passionate about it i love my music um proper fucking music and uh so this is where where that's got got me to know you know so which and, I, cool, man, yeah. and i get to talk to people like you as well which is great <laughs> Deadly, <yeah. laughs> so that's it rob listen um thanks a million for coming on um who knows i hope this maybe this interview might get you something yeah fingers crossed man yeah if you there's know. any bands out there do uh do give us a shout the website is www.mint-video.com um for however long that'll be still up there that and, can be taken down any day but, the, but and you're on facebook as well and on facebook yeah absolutely so do do check me out and if there is if there is bands who do want to approach me uh, again that that little break that i'm on don't let that put you off do get on to me and we can work something out or they could at least point you in the right direction maybe help help you in a bit of the production it'll be something to keep me fucking sane as well because i'm bored off my head doing nothing to be yeah. honest with you man so yeah absolutely thank you so much for having me as well man this has been deadly Cool, Rob. Thanks a million. You've been listening to The Metal Cell at uh, gmail.com. If you can find, you can find me on The Metal Cell at gmail.com if you want to contact me to come on the show. I'm on Facebook and Instagram and also now on YouTube at The Metal Cell 666 on YouTube. So that's it. Over and out. Yeah.